Hi, I'm Marika from My Creative Quilts and I thought I would do a video for brand new quilters who don't know what kind of tools that they should get. When you're flipping through magazines and reading books and reading online about quilting, you see there are many different kinds of, of tools available, but what do you really need to start? Some of these tools are not cheap and if it's not a craft that you think you might continue with or your money is limited, you want to make sure that you buy only what you need and in how you are going to be able to use it. So I'm going to show you what I use and what I recommend. Like I say in all my videos, these are my ideas and my tips. There are no quilt police. If you like what I do, do it. Copy it. If you don't like what I do, take it with a grain of salt. So I'm just going to move the camera a little bit so you can see my uh, table with my supplies on it. There we go. So the first thing you really need are good scissors. Okay. I have several pairs of scissors. That is just some of them, but these are the ones I use the most. Now these are my big shears. They're Henkel's. They were a gift. They're not cheap, but this is one time that I would say really don't scrimp. Buy the best scissors you can afford. The reasoning behind that is cheaper scissors don't keep their their sharpness on their blades. They can be very difficult to maneuver even if you do adjust them a little bit and they can just be frustrating and become painful especially if you're doing a lot of cutting. So these are my large shears and I use them when I'm cutting big pieces of fabric. Then I have my smaller ones. This is for my detailed work. It's very hard to do small detailed work with these so I use these smaller ones. Also Henkel. And then these are my paper scissors and my vinyl or whatever it else, non-fabric. I don't want to be cutting uh, tough things with my fabric scissors. I want to keep them as sharp as possible. So I have a dedicated pair of scissors. There's, I just put a loop on them so I can hang them on a hook. Then you have your small scissors for snipping threads or small pieces of applique. Um, these are the kind that I use for small pieces of applique just a small pair of sharp scissors. Make sure they stay sharp because dull scissors can be very painful. You can hurt yourself easily because with dull scissors you force them more and that's when you can slip. It's the same thing as with a knife. A, a more dangerous knife is a duller knife. These are also good for snipping threads but as I showed in a, other, in a previous video, I like these now for, slipping, for snipping threads. There's just I just like how they feel and um, I just like them. So you're also going to need a rotary cutter. Okay, You don't have to have a rotary cutter. For generations, quilters have been making quilts without rotary cutters, but it makes the job a heck of a lot easier. So there are several types of, of cutters. This is the one that I use, but you can get some that have just straight handles. You can get more ergonomic ones. You can get ones that will only, the blade will pop out when you press on it and then when you pull it up, the blade will retract. So you use what's comfortable for you. They can be adapted for left or right hand. And make sure you buy good blades, <coughs> excuse me, good blades and make sure you have plenty of them. You want to replace them. Same concept, you don't want a dull blade. That's when you start having your accidents if you have dull blades. So that's a rotary cutter. And then don't forget the seam rippers. You have to have seam rippers. You are going to make mistakes. I make tons of mistakes. Um, you can use the, the inexpensive cheap ones and these are great. They do break though, um, but they're great for what you need them for. This one came with my sewing machine. Most sewing machines come with at least one. This is one that a friend got for me. She has a friend whose husband makes them. And what I love about it, it's also a stiletto. And I'll show you in another video why we use stilettos. So on one end, there's a stiletto. And on the other end, there is a seam ripper. And it's quite sharp. I have found that out. Uh, what I like about it is the weight. I'm very picky about the weight of things. Like with pens when I'm writing, there are only certain pens I like to write with because I like the weight of them. But do get yourself at least one seam ripper. I recently purchased a battery operated one, which is right here. It's like a beer trimmer actually. And I used it just a couple of days ago because I, I badly sewed some seams together. And you just sort of lift the fabric and this will cut the threads as you go along. You can't use it if you've quilted wrong and you have to pick out all your quilting stitches, which I've done many, many times myself, but this is very good for, for cutting out seams. I do like it. I, I wasn't sure I would, but I did. So that's it for the cutting implements. You're also gonna need a cutting board, okay? They come in all sizes. I have a couple of large ones like this, okay? They're not cheap. 
So if you don't know if quilting is going to be something that you want to continue doing, I suggest you get a smaller one. But, you know, you really get what, what you can afford and what you can use. So there's that one, and then there's a smaller one. Of course, you can't cut big pieces of fabric on it, but, you know, like I said, they're not cheap, so you want to make sure you know what you're, you're getting into. They're marked with inches. Some quilters use the back. They don't want to be distracted with the inches on there. I use the inches, but there's a big debate about whether you should be measuring using the inches on here or on your ruler. Um, I say as long as you're consistent. If you're going to start making your measurements with this, keep making your measurements with this. If you're going to be using your measurements with a ruler, you keep using the ruler. It really depends on what you want to use, but it's consistency that's the key. But if you want to use your ruler and not be distracted by the lines, by all means, you can use the back. They all, we also have um, certain things, like this one I have for when I travel, this has um, a place where I can iron my fabric and there's a cutting board on the back. So that's also very handy. I use this one a lot as well. So that's the cutting board. You're gonna need a ruler. You have to have rulers. I have many rulers, but the one, I've had this one for almost 30 years. This is one of the original rulers that I started with. Uh, I prefer the Omni Grid. I like the yellow on the clear, but there are other kinds and other people like other rulers. And I have several shapes. I have squares, I have triangles, different sizes. Uh, I have really long one for when I'm cutting my, my big pieces of fabric, but this is the one I use consistently on just about every single project. It's uh, six inches by 12, and I think this is the best ruler. If you can only have a couple of rulers, I like this size, I recommend this size. I do have little sticky, they're not sticky things, they're like rubber. You can buy these, the, these are important for me, not everybody needs them, but I find most quilters I speak to use them. When you put them on the fabric, when you put a, I'm gonna put it upside down and show you. When you're cutting on fabric, the ruler can move and that can cause not just mistakes, but injuries. So if you have rubber on it, it doesn't move. And that, so it keeps your fabric from shifting. If you're cutting, it keeps it from shifting. I also have this one, this, this longer traditional ruler. This I also have had for almost 30 years. And um, it comes, I don't use it as much as this one, but it comes in handy. So those are the rulers that you're going to need. You need pin cushions, and there's so many different kinds of pin cushions, and you need pins. So first of all, I use mostly these flathead pins. I like them. Uh, I find that they don't distort my fabric as I quilt, as I pin them together as much as the, the round ones. I do use the round ones for different things, but I generally use the flathead pins. These pins are for my long arm sewing machine, but this was just to show you the different kinds of, of pin cushions. This is one that you can put on your wrist and some people like that. I had to extend the elastic because apparently I have very thick wrists. So you can use something like this or you can use a magnetic pin holder. I thought I would like the magnetic one, but I just found it when there's a whole bunch of pins on there, I found it hard to take them off without poking myself. And this was, I got this in a swap. We made pin cushions in my, at the Quilt Guild. And this is the one I got, and I thought it was pretty cute. And this is the one I made for traveling. It's got a little bin you can throw. So you just put it on the side of the table, put your pins in. If I was to make them again, I would put something solid on the bottom because the pins can go right through. And if I'm holding the pin cushion, that can be painful. Um, let's see, what else do you need? Oh yes, needles for your sewing machine. There are many different kinds of needles that you can get, okay? I tend to buy the Schmetz or the Superior, and I tend to also get the Universal and the Top Stitch ones. There's a lot of differences that I'm not gonna go into. You can Google, you know, what are the differences between sewing machine needles. Uh, but I usually use the universal or the top stitch. I do have thicker needles. I have denim. I have leather for when I'm sewing bags or something that takes really thick seams. Uh, buy good quality needles, but they're not expensive. The experts recommend that you change your needles every eight hours of sewing after or ever, after every quilt, whichever uh, you feel is more appropriate for you. Since they're not an expensive thing, I th I suggest you follow that. It's better to start a new project with a new sharp needle than to have it go dull on you and maybe cause some problems while you're sewing. Um, marking. If you're going to be quilting, 
by hand or by machine, you may want to mark your patterns. I tend to do a lot by eye, but I also do marking. So um, different quilters use different things for markings. Some use chalk, some use pens, some use um, tape. I've done that. I've used masking tape and quilted along the side. Whatever works for you. Like I've always, that I like I keep saying. So this particular one, this purple one, is an air disappearing ink. So if I'm using, uh, no, this is the the water, air air and water soluble ink. So this one, I can do it on the fabric, and it'll disappear over time, and it won't leave any marks behind. I've never had any problems with this, but you always test your fabric before you use it. Test it on a scrap because you never know that might be the one time the fabric won't take. This is a water disappearing pen. So this is one if I want it to stay longer. Okay, this one, I don't care. It's staying for a few hours and then disappears. This one, if I'm working on the project on and off, I may want the mark to stay longer. So you mark on the quilt with this and then you spritz it with water and it goes away. This is a chalk one that I use too. It's white because when you're doing with dark fabrics and black fabrics, these don't work. So I have this as well, but there are really many, many ways you can mark your quilts. If you're sewing by machine, you may want to invest in a walking foot. A walking foot, what, when you're sewing with your machine, you have your feed dog underneath as you're guiding your fabric. You're not pushing it through, you're guiding it through. But this can cause bunching. You can start with two 10 inch pieces of fabric, one on top of the other. When you get to the end, one might be slightly off just a little bit, but that's because the top one isn't being fed through like the bottom one with the feed dogs. So this has a feed dog on top. So when you attach it to your sewing machine, when you're pushing your fabric, guiding your fabric through, it's being gripped on the top and the bottom and it's, it's a better uh, fit. Okay. Some people do quilting with this. Some people just use it for their piecing. They're not expensive and um, I, I do think that they're a good investment if you're going to be using your machine. And they're also good for other projects, not just quilting. You can use them if you're sewing pillows or bags or curtains or whatever. This is really a very handy tool to have. If you're um, other things that are not, in, you don't have to have it, but they're nice to have. This is called a purple thing. Thang, T-H-A-N-G. That's not the way I talk, it's the way it's called. And this is good for poking holes in corners if you're flipping things inside out. Um, and it's uh, it's not heat resistant, so you can't use it as a stylus. But this is good for, sometimes you're sewing um, pieces that need to be flipped inside out and you can just kind of nudge it along with this. And this is a bamboo press. You can use it to press seams together. You have a piece of fabric and you press on it because sometimes you don't want to use your iron or sometimes you're using a fabric that you can't. And it's also good for poking out corners if you're turning things inside out. And then like I was showing you the stiletto, I recommend that you have a stiletto. It doesn't have to be this kind. It can be a separate one because when you're sewing, you have your needle here. You don't want to push too close with your finger. I know people who have sewn through their finger. This is your, this is your finger. You push it ahead with this. Uh, very handy tool. It's also very sharp, so be careful with it. And of course you're going to need thread. Buy the best quality thread you can afford. I know the dollar store sells thread. I know the, the, the cheaper chain stores do. Um, if it's all you can afford, it's all you can afford. But you're putting a lot of time and effort and money into the quilt. If you use a cheap thread that will break easily, then you're kind of defeating the purpose. Uh, this one is polyester, I think. Yeah, this is a Guterman. I don't have a favorite quilt. I don't have a favorite type of thread, and it really depends on if I'm machine quilting or from hand quilting. But I do try to buy bigger spools of the colors I use the most often, and I watch for sales. And when the thread goes on sale, I pick up as much as I can in the different colors that I can. The, it used to be recommended that you only use 100% cotton when you're quilting because you're using 100% cotton fabric. The theory was the polyester was stronger than the cotton and it would break the threads in the polyester. That's not really a thing anymore. So I just use whatever thread I want to use. Um, for piecing and for, for quilting, I just, whatever there is. And um, another thing that's nice to have if you're machine quilting are machine quilting gloves. I can't find the other one right now. 
I, I used to use one, a type that's white. Uh, I tried these and I seem to like them better. Some people just get gardening gloves. That's good, okay too. But what they do is, oh, you can see this one's well used, look at that. Um, when you're holding the fabric and you're machine quilting, this helps you grip them. So the problem is if you're not using a glove, you're, you're pressing. You're putting a lot of force on the fabric because you don't want your fingers to move. And that can cause a lot of problems with your shoulders and your arms, and it can cause problems with the piece itself. So if you have a glove, pair of gloves, both of them, then you, you don't need to press so hard because the grippy things here do that for you. There are other things you can use. There are hoops that you can put on. Um, some people use the, you know, the mesh, plastic mesh things you can buy at the dollar store to put under rugs or um, shelving things to keep them from slipping. Some people use those. I've tried using those. That works just as well. So that's your option too. So I'm just going to bring this back up again so I can say my goodbyes. Um, I can't think of anything else to show you right now. Um, of course, you're going to need a good iron. Yes, I should talk about the iron. This is the one I have. It was a gift from somebody. Uh, it doesn't have to be an expensive iron as long as it's, it gets hot and you can use it. I prefer the ones that shut off automatically. A lot of quilters don't because when you're going back and forth, you know, you're, you're sewing something, you're going to the machine, you're going back, so, oh, it turned itself off again. I prefer that because I tend to get distracted easily. I have to leave the room. I have to answer the phone. I work from home, so sometimes I'm quilting in between uh, projects to give myself a bit of a break instead of a coffee break. So, um, you know, get the best one you can afford. But I don't put water in it. A lot of people, you know, when they're, when they're, they're ironing, they have their steam. And steam is important, especially when you're working with fabric. You have to get the creases out. But Ricky Timms, I went to a, a workshop that he put on. He's a, he's a really great quilter. Look him up if you, if you want to see some of his stuff. It's Ricky Timms, T-I-M-S. He had a great line. He said, uh, all irons that you put water in become incontinent at some point. And it's true. I find that my irons don't last as long when I put water. So now it's, I'm a no water iron zone. And I just have my spritzy. I just spritz the water on and iron that way. Um, I just find that's the best solution for me. So that's it for now for the best tools for when you're beginning to quilt. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'll try and answer it. And if you think I've forgotten any important tools, just let me know and I'll add it to the list. Have a good day.